12 o'clock, what? Three. So on, Six. right? Then you want to turn that into the circle of fifths. So now you finish the clock. So first of all, make your clock. Any questions on the clock? No? Okay, so we got a clock. You all know what the clock is. Now we're turning that into a circle of fifths. So this is five. So put here one, two, three, four, five. So that's five. Five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. For this whole side. This side, you're going to make one, two, three, four. Circle of fours. So if you're going this way, it's going to be a little bit different than if you go this way. Then, the next step, we're doing this stepwise fashion. The next step to get it in your head, and this has to be more or less rote memory, make yourself your boxes. C, G, F. That's box one. The next two boxes are going to be like so. Down. Should include this one. This one you're going to cross out. One opposite 12, you're going to cross out and not use it. It'll probably be two years before you use it, if then. Next thing you've got to make is these two boxes. So make this box first because it's the easiest one. Okay, F, B, E, A, the next one be D. The word B, B, E, A, D. Skip this one, and then we're going to start down here. And we're going to go up with B, E, A. Going to be a D in there. B. B down and B up. Question? B E B E A D. We're gonna make a little bit. Get rid of some of the clutter. Right now you don't need you don't need all that. So where we're at now, you only need a certain amount. So what we're doing is a key of C. We're on top of Old Smokey, do do least Baron Harrison. Okay. Then we've got G. The same kind of works when it wants to work. This is your top box. This is one sharp. This is one flat. This is a flat side. This is a sharp side. So that's the next thing you have to get in your member bank after putting the two blocks down here. B, E, A, D, these are all flats. B, E, A, D, these are all sharps. G, B, A. This is two sharps. Three sharps. Now, somebody brought up last week a question on transposing, and that's extremely important. And that's what this circle of fifths, I'm about to show you what this circle of fifths is used for 
in music. Right? It's used for several things. One, transposing means that it's played in a different key. Okay. So let's see if I can do something. See if you can get that high. Try it. No way. Okay? So when they say, when a singer says, I sing in this key, you've got to be aware of what that means. What that means is something based on this music theory for the circle fit. So basically, that's a very high key. So if you want to bring it down for a more male voice, you bring it down lower. C. And then you have to know a little bit about the song, like that song on top of Old Smokey. It starts on C. It starts on the first note. But a lot of songs don't start on the first note. This song starts on the fifth note in the key of C. C, D, E, F, G. It starts here. So obviously it's going to go a lot higher. Right? Okay. So C was high for a female voice. So when the male says, you know, I sing in another key, and he's probably going to say, I sing in D, D, G, we got here, D, and A. He's probably going to sing here. So you take D, what you've done is lower that first note, and also the high note. Everybody, every instrument has a range, a high and a low. So we're starting here, and we're going to go way up there. Now if we start here, we're going to go down at least two notes. If we start here in C, that would be the fifth note is C, but it's the fifth note of that scale. We only have to go up to this C. Many males can sing up there. Some males can do what we call falsetto, which is a false. You have a chest voice and a nasal voice, okay? So you raise it up high by faking it. Women have a natural falsetto. Men don't. So uh, a lot of mariachi, for example, Hawaiian singers may actually sing in a high range, which is what they call a falsetto. They're bringing it up. They're pushing it up higher than the, their normal range. Okay, so that means that this song here, now instead of playing it in C, you've got to play it in D. There's different ways to do that. On the keyboard, because MIDI music is what it is, you can take the keyboard and just push a button or push a number, whatever, and it will go to any one of the eight uh, notes you want it to, the ranges. My piano at home, I just have to slide it up. It'll go up as far as G here, or as far as A there. So if I say G, I just push this little thing, and now when I play it in C, it's going to come out in G. Okay? Any questions? <clears throat> That's transposing a song. So when you transpose a song, you have to take the Nashville system with your fingers. If we say it's in C, the first chord is going to be C, the fifth chord is going to be G, the fourth chord is going to be F. But if we take it up here to D, <clears throat> that's no longer true. The first chord is going to have to be a D. D, E, F, G, A. The fifth chord is going to have to be A, and the third chord is going to have, the fourth chord is going to have to be G. So every time you change keys or transpose, you're going to have to take the whole chord system 
and bring it up. So once you get this number system working, that's why they call it the Nashville numbering system, and you start using your hands and your fingers, it's not too hard to do. C, D, E, F, G. One, two, three, four, five. Yes? I'm just doing what you're doing. Pardon? I'm just doing what you're doing. Okay, but with the right hand. Right. We're saving the left hand for left hand stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. So C, D, E, F, G, or D, E, F sharp, A, G. So now the first chord is D. The fifth chord is G. F is the fourth chord. So now wherever you see in that there, song sheet, C, you'll be playing a D. Wherever you see a G, you're going to be playing an A. So all those chords have to change. This will make more sense as you start getting the fingering down. So, so why did you progress to D and Pardon? not try like A? Or why did we go from C to D? To, well, because it's the national... I okay. Mean, because it's C to D. Sing with, sing with me. Do. Do. Where are you at? Do. Do. If any of you have iPhones or uh, iPads, you can get, it'll tell you where you're at in the scale. Oh, really? I'm lower than you are. Okay. Do, re, mi, fa, so. And if I start getting in falsetto, do, re, mi, fa, so. La, ti, do, do, re, mi. That's falsetto. You're falsing it. Now, with enough training, that doesn't sound bad. You hear mariachi male in falsetto, but he's got maybe a year or two of training his voice. He can sing out that falsetto with sound, but but it's, it's not his normal range. So he's not going to sing up there very long. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with the trumpet. In all music, and more than likely, you're going to have to play with somebody. I think most of us don't want to just sit home and play by ourselves forever on music. Somebody's going to want you to play for them to what? To sing, to dance, or for you to listen. So for them to listen. If it's listening, you can do almost anything you want. But the minute you start adding somebody else to it, a musician or a singer, then you've got to start going along with what they can do. Okay? This is a trumpet. You look at, best thing to do, again, is start listening to music critically. Don't so <laughs> listen to it in background. Say to yourself, that is a trumpet playing. That is a flute playing now. That is uh, a drum playing, whatever. But anyway, say to yourself, this is transposing instrument, which means that when I play a C on here, it's not the same C you play. Okay? And that's just the way music is. So you have B flat transposing instrument. So if you look at your keyboard, put your finger on C. Go down one note to B. Go down one more half tone, I'm sorry. Go down one half tone to B. Now to the black, next key, which is black, a half tone. That's B flat, that's where this plays. So when you play a C, this guy is gonna be playing a B flat. So you have lots of instruments that are B flat. You have the trumpet, uh, clarinet, and so on. And they call them B flat, B flat, uh, saxophones. Okay. So the next one is an E flat. So you only really have to learn in the horn world two of them. E flat. So now take, put your thumb on C. Go up to D, E, and now lower that E to flat, to the black key. That's E flat. Therefore, what that means to this guy, or to you, somebody's going to have to do something about it, right? So, usually the guy writing the music is the guy that does something about it. But the musician, once he trains himself, he can do something about it, too. So if this song is in C, like it is there, on here it's going to have to be played in D, with two sharps. If it's in G, this guy is going to have to play it in A, three sharps. Any questions? 
Just listen. The way they make the tone change by pushing down a deep fell. Okay, so they're open or push. If they're good, and that probably takes about four years on this instrument to play it, they can take that sheet music that you've got, and I don't have to redo it for them. <clears throat> so when we've got a band now, that means I have to make music in one key for concert pitch instruments, a different key for B flat, and a different key for E flat instruments. If they're good, and they have to learn a lot of this series before they get there, they can look at that music and say, I just play it one note higher in the other key. E flat would be two notes higher, but they've got to add the sharps that go with it. So they're no longer going to play it with no sharps. They're going to play it with whatever sharps are needed, but all they have to do is if they look at uh, it's La Cucaracha, D, G, B. Da, 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 da. Then they'll be playing on here, E, A, C sharp. That's E, A, C sharp on that instrument. Okay? What I'm trying to impress on you how important it is to start using your head. Okay? Not just make the fingers do the walking. This is a violin. These are the most common uh, instruments, at least around Texas here, and in a violin. Or in Texas, we call it a fiddle, right? So a fiddle is the same as a violin. It just depends on the way that the guy plays it. Now, the strings here are E, look at the bead. Put the B in. This is the first string on the violin, the high string. A is the second string on the violin. Okay. D is the third string, and G is this string. So that's true of almost all string instruments. They may go this way, or they may go this way, depending on if they're a bass, or viola, or cello, or whatever. But the bottom line is, they're all based on this circle of fifths. So all music is going to be based on the circle of fifths. And that's why it's very important to learn how to, what the circle of fifths is. Anytime you sit down to music, that's a very high note, right? These are what you call soprano instruments. So what we've been working on up to now with the right hand is the treble part, the upper staff, or what is known as the soprano instruments. Trumpet's a soprano instrument. What's another soprano instrument? Can't you have a sax, a soprano sax? Yeah, sax would be that. Flute is probably the high one. Piccolo is higher yet. Those are very, very high. Piccolo would be an octave above this. So, anyway, that's why every time you sit down and practice, get your sheet of paper and make your clock. Okay, and then just keep adding to that clock your knowledge base. And first the circle of fifths, then go around to the circle of fourths. Because you're always going to need one, five, and four on every song. There's going to be thousands of songs that you can play once you learn that. But the problem is, you're going to have to learn it in a few different keys. This is a key here, A, that the fiddle players like. So again, if you're going to play with somebody else, like a singer, 
I'm probably going to have to play in their key. So the fiddle players like this because it's, it's easier than doing this. So they move their fingers very, very quickly here. It doesn't get so easy when they're up here. Okay. A lot of these like this. Okay. So they're going to like the key of A. You on the keyboard are not going to like the key of A. Because that means you're going to have to play three black keys. Three black keys. Okay. And the next keys that they like is down here D and G. And then C is the least likely one for a fiddle player. So if you're going to play with fiddle players, and a lot of our music is fiddling and clogging, <coughs> we're going to play in the key of A. So right now it's easiest to learn in the key of C. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. Let's everybody try singing. Okay, the scale. Okay. And I don't care what key you're in, try to sing along. You're the singer, so give us a, can you give me a C? I just use it. Something. And remember the very first class we gave that when you tune instruments, they all have to be in tune. They all have to be tuned the same, or it's not going to sound good. So, what did we say you tune them against? A here. A above middle C equals 440. So when you get a tuner, you'll have to make sure that it's set that A equals 440. Mm -hmm. Here's a tuner that would fit on the violin. And there's different kind of tuners. This tuner here tunes by the vibration. Okay? That means if this guy is playing the trumpet, he's not going to bother that tuner. But if you've got three instruments playing, the tuner doesn't know who to listen to. Okay? So if it's a microphone tuner, like our iPad would be or iPhone would be, it's going to listen to whatever. So if you're tuning, you better go in a back room or somewhere because they don't even pick up people talking. So it'll go against whatever sound or music that it hears. For those of us in the old days, I could never play a string instrument in the old days because I just didn't have the ear for music. My wife has got it, but I don't. But anyway, you tune it against some kind of tuning device. That's the highest one, right? That's a violin tuner. So you can get a tuner like this right up to the cheek. So if you've got a good ear, and you know when you hear that sound what it is, you can tune it against something like this. However, <coughs> even most professionals now, or good players, will get a tuner because they're very, very cheap. And they'll put it on their device like this and leave it on there all the time. Even your keyboard might on occasion have to be tuned. Normally it doesn't have to be. But again, it's very important. That should be in your notes somewhere there in the booklet. And I know it is. A equals 440. A equals 440. So when it says A, that's the A above middle C. So that's 440 cycles. Everybody find that A. Got it? So that's what all your instruments have to be tuned against. Now, there's two kinds of tuning. 
there's relative tuning. So if I get a guitar player here, I can tune this against him, ear tuning against him, right? That's relative tuning. I'm tuning relative to this guy. That doesn't mean that's right. He has to be tuned to A equal 440, and then we're all tuned the same. So it sounds okay in music if you are tuned to another instrument that you're playing with. So always tune against somebody else. Or for sure, you should all be tuned against the tuner. Well, how often does the instrument have to be tuned, and how do you know when it needs to be tuned? Well, that's a hard question to answer. It depends a little bit on it depends a little bit on the instrument. A mandolin is quite a bit different than a violin. Uh, keyboards, generally speaking, don't have to be. But if I play this every day, and it's a good violin, it'll probably stay in tune. Okay. And again, I should probably say that in the tuning, if you get a tuning for an iPad or a there might be one on the computer that you can look at uh, with any computer or an iPhone. <clears throat> they divide your music into cents. So there's 50 cents for each half tone. So when you go from G sharp, for example, to A on your thing, that would be 50 cents down. So you've got 100 cents to make a full full tone. So basically, getting back to your question, these are coarse tuners, these are fine tuners. So you'll find a lot of people on stage, and I don't really like it personally, but anyway, a lot of people will tune as they go. They'll do it down here. Or they'll stop the song. Now if they're on a camera and a, on video forever, uh, that's really not a good idea. But again, they want to be in tune. So you'll find some musicians do what I call excess tuning. They're always tuning. Okay. But anyway, if this is not played for two or three weeks, the weather changes, the strings get tightened, or they loosen up. Hot weather, they're going to loosen. Cold weather, they're going to tighten. So frequently when I pick this up, if it's been in my house at home, it's going to be 50 cents low which means the A will be a G sharp. Okay, so they'll all be a little bit low. So then all you have to do is do a little bit tuning. Now this one happens to have what we call a certain kind of peg. These are not regular pegs. If you have wood pegs on here, the wood on wood, that's kind of antique. So they need to be tuned a lot more. These are steel inside, they're geared just like the uh, tuning pegs on a guitar, almost any instrument other than violin, cello, or bass. For whatever reason, they have tended to keep it wood on wood. But somebody made these different. They look like wood, but they're not. But they will keep the tune a lot more than the regular wood in a regular violin. So, <clears throat> for example, if we have a bunch of kids come over and want to play the instruments that are sitting around my house. They'll pick up a violin, they think they can start playing it, or they can tune it. You can't tune it in a hurry. Okay? So if it sits there, and especially if the house is warm, it's going to go out of tune. So the more you keep it in tune, again, the more you play it, the more it'll stay in tune. Did I answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, any question on transposing instruments? Concert pitch. This is what they call concert pitch. Concert pitch instruments are the real key the music is in. Concert pitch instrument will be a keyboard, a piano, an organ, an accordion, and so on. Your transposing instruments will probably be your horns. <coughs> 